I want to talk today about a very important subject that I think gets overlooked a lot in the spiritual life, and that is the subject of spiritual reading. We all know that we have to say our prayers every day. We have to go to Mass on Sunday. We have to go to confession and communion regularly. And we all do these things faithfully, and that's good. But if that is the extent of our spiritual life, then we'll always be limited by that. Because there's more that we need to do. We have to read and and learn about our holy faith and educate ourselves, particularly by reading the thoughts of the saints. And this is something that I recommend to people a lot because I think it tends to get neglected. And people miss out on, on the really huge benefits that we can get so easily just from doing spiritual reading. When I talk about spiritual reading, the books that I'm talking about include almost any book that treats of our religion. This can be Holy Scripture or the writings of the saints. It can be the life of a saint or or any one of the, the many, many books that are written about the life of our Lord or about the virtues and the vices. Uh, or about uh, private revelations, as long as they're approved by the Church, or books about the Holy Mass, or any mystery of our faith, or any devotion the Catholics practice. Any book about that is included in what I'm talking about today. And if you look around, you can very easily find a vast number of old books. Uh, They should certainly be written before 1960, Uh, And in general, the books written before the 20th century are better on the whole than than things in the 20th century. Uh, There's an enormous number of books that fall into this category. There's a lot of stuff out there. And now, more and more, you can even download very high-quality scans of of very good old Catholic books off of of the Internet for completely free. uh, There's a couple of websites that are trying to to scan every book practically that's ever been written that's out of copyright and make it available to download for free. And in the process, they've, they've scanned an enormous number of very good Catholic books. And I can explain to anyone how to find these if they're interested. But spiritual reading has an amazing power in the soul. It exposes us to more ideas about our faith. It makes us look into the minds of the saints or of holy people or even the Holy Ghost himself, if you read the Bible. And we spend so much time reading worldly things, articles on the internet, for example, by people who are completely worldly and have no religion at all. Or we listen to to, uh, pagan people talking on, on TV and on the radio. Our lives are constantly surrounded all day long by the words of people who don't have the slightest shred of religion in their lives. And this, is, this has a destructive effect on our spiritual life that I think we don't realize. Even if what we're listening to is not something immoral or something against the faith, it's still just worldly at best. And even the lack of any mention of God says implicitly either that God doesn't exist at all or that it's not worth talking about him. <clears throat> And we have to counteract this by some exposure to the thoughts and words of people that are good and holy and who love God and who love to write about God and who do so in a beautiful way that shows us God's love for us. Many of us have have read the life of a saint or, or even just heard a little incident from the life of some saint and we've thought to ourselves, I wish I had lived in in his time period or in his or her city. I wish I had known this saint personally because it would be just incredible to see someone who has that kind of fire of the love of God. And it's true that it would be a very powerful thing to see someone with, to see a real live saint. But we can have something almost as good. We have exposure to the thoughts and the words of thousands and thousands of saints from 2,000 years of the history of the church. We can read what they thought and what they said and how they prayed to God and the advice that they have for us. 
And if we read what they wrote, we, we get to know them. Like, like They're like our friends. And their influence rubs off on us. We always become like the people that we associate with. And if most of the people that, that we are exposed to are non-Catholics at work or the people on TV, which are all you know, truly, truly evil people in the media, constantly spreading naturalism and atheism, if that's all we, we hear and, and all we see, then we become like those people. But on the contrary, the more we read the words of holy people, the more we become like them. St. Ambrose lived 1,600 years ago, and yet we can read his words today as if they were spoken to us in person, as if we, we heard him saying them. And he said basically what I'm saying, much better than I am, he said, the Holy Scriptures are like so many letters that are sent to us from our own country. So let us read them with the same eagerness that a man would read the letters he receives from his own country, from which he has been absent for a long time. Let us read them to see what news we have from heaven, which is our true country, to see what they tell us of our Father's brethren and friends that are there, and to see what they say about that place where we so earnestly desire to go. And how true that is, we should be more zealous in learning about heaven than about things in this earth. Another important benefit that we get from reading books about the spiritual life is that they help us pray. When it comes to prayer, we all need all the help that we can get. Because prayer is something that's very difficult. It's very hard to raise our minds to a supernatural level and, and think about mysteries that we don't comprehend and to, to pray to an infinite being. But a large part of this is because we can't raise our minds to God when they're completely filled with worldly things. If all we know is the basic facts of our catechism and, and whatever we get from the few minutes that we spend at church on Sunday, then we'll have very little to think about when we pray. Our minds are, are empty of thoughts of God. But when we read a spiritual book and, and we hear the thoughts that the saints had in their prayer life, we understand much better what God expects from us and the sort of relationship that we need to have with Him, and that helps us to communicate with Him better. And then when the time comes to say our prayers, we have all kinds of beautiful thoughts in our minds about God that we learn from our, our book. Or again, if we're reading the life of a saint, we see in practice how they applied the virtues that, that we need to have. We see their patience, their humility, their zeal for God. We see their detachment from this world. And we see how someone performed all these virtues on a heroic level. And that gives us a target to aim at. When we think of spiritual reading, we don't read a holy book in the same way that we would read a novel or, or a book on history or a book on some other subject. St. Bernard says, He who sets himself to read does not so much seek to learn as to taste of the things of God. So we're, we're partly reading in order to learn about the faith, but not primarily. Our primary purpose in reading holy books is just to expose ourselves to God. And in fact, when we're reading, we're actually praying to God while we are reading, because we're learning about God and our thoughts are directed towards Him as we read about Him. And we see how to apply the words to our own souls, our own spiritual life, and all of that is a form of prayer. And it's actually a much easier form of prayer to read a book about God and, and to think about God while we're praying, while we're, while we're reading, rather, because the work is already done for us. Someone else already figured out what we should say, and it's all right there in the book. We just have to follow along. And so this is why I always recommend to people to do spiritual reading, especially when they're coming back to the practice of religion after they've been away, or if 
if someone is dissatisfied with their spiritual life and, and thinks that they've fallen into lukewarmness, and they want to arouse themselves to greater fervor, to their first first fervor, I always recommend spiritual reading. That, that really helps get the person's spiritual life going. God is infinitely lovable and, and desirable and perfect and holy. And if we, if we can't see that because we're lukewarm, which is what lukewarmness is, all we have to do is to read the thoughts and the words of someone who does see that, does understand the beauty of God, and it will inspire us to love God more the way the, the author does. And someone who reads out of a good book on a regular basis will continue to grow in fervor on the love of God. It's one of those things that, that works automatically every time for everyone that does it, and it's guaranteed. So someone might say, so what book should I read, and, and when should I read it? That's very simple. Any, any spiritual reading at all will benefit someone, and as long as it's, as I said, a non-fictional book about our faith by a saint or, or any holy writer, but I, I usually recommend people to read what they like and what they find interesting, because it's all good. And people should read what they enjoy so that they'll continue to do it. Most people won't continue to read something that's difficult or, or, or boring. So some people might like to read the life of, of some saint, or they might have some author that, uh, whose style appeals to them. Or there might be some subject or some devotion that they like. For example... Some people are attracted to the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And there's an enormous number of books written about that. Or um, other people are, are devoted to Our Lady, and, and there's lots and lots of books about devotion to her. So just read anything you like, and it'll help you. And, and then as far as how and, and when people should read, again, the more the better. It's not a bad idea to put a book on... On, on your nightstand and read a few minutes before going to bed. And if someone can only read one or two pages a day, that's not that much, but it's, it's a lot more than nothing. It's better to do 10 or 15 minutes a day to really let, let the ideas sink in and really absorb a, a more useful amount. But the important thing is that we do it every day or, or almost every day. And we need that encouragement from others. We need to hear the voices of these holy people warming our hearts with the fire of God's love and the love of virtue and inflaming us with zeal. And it really is a consoling practice, too, especially now when the world is completely pagan and, and it, we feel like we're kind of alone in the world in our, in our holy faith. And in a sense, we are but in a sense, we're not. We're surrounded by the communion of saints, all these great saints that have lived before us that we can still associate with, like, like socialize with by reading their books. So let us, and it, and it never fails to fill us with hope when we read about our holy religion. So let us follow the words of St. Jerome. He said, Let sleep surprise you with a book in your hand. And let the Holy Scriptures receive your reclining head. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.